I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production. Recently, I was on Melda's forum and someone asked if there was a way to get variations like you'd hear in an analog synthesizer. They wanted to know if there's an easy and simple way to do it. So I thought I would show them how to do it today. You can do it by using this analog button. And before I showed this, but I thought today I would try to get a little bit more in depth. Let's get started. So in the generator here, I have a fast filter and I have an oscillator. I like using the fast filter. This is a zero delay filter. And in the future, hopefully there'll be more zero delay filters that are kind of like analog modeled. But uh, for now, got this. So this is the one we're gonna use. The oscillator is not really important. Before we get started, I kind of want to show you what this can do. Let me turn the resonance up a little bit so you can hear it a little bit more clearly. Um, I'm going to use this frequency and use a frequency sweep here. Uh, I'm going to use an envelope. What we're going to do is take the envelope. I have this at you know, like 88 milliseconds or so. And as it is, if I play it. Oh, let me actually increase the release a little bit. That's just annoying me, uh, but that's not really important. But if you hear when I play one note or two notes, they're playing at the exact same speed, which is what you'd expect, right? But if we use the analog here, we can change that. Let me just turn this off here. Analog drift down a bit. Now, we can go into here and change this analog drift, but this will change the depth. And I don't really want to do that, but what I do want to do is change the attack speed. So... I could go in here and mess with this or and change it. So let's change this all the way to 100 so you can hear it. And I want you to try to listen closely. I know it's a little bit hard to hear. When I play two notes, listen to the different sweeps. You can hear they're actually at different speeds, like this. So if you listen carefully, you can hear how one's going a little bit faster than the other. If I go into the global and increase the depth, it'll you know increase it even more. Uh, hopefully, I can do it. So you can hear they're going at slightly different speeds there. So that's one thing you can do. That's a little bit subtle, but that is a way to change that. Let me change that. Because I don't, we don't really need it at 100%. Let's move it to like 40 or something. That's more than enough in my, in my opinion. You can do the same thing with the hold, delay, sustain, release, etc. for any of the envelopes. And you can do the same thing with the LFOs to give those a little bit of variation. But here in the oscillator, you're thinking, okay, well, that's not too different. Uh, of course, I could use the analog drift, which I had there before. But... You're thinking, okay, if I wanted to make multiple oscillators and uh, have each of them slightly detuned, I could, of course, use three oscillators here, or four, or five, or all the way at six. And there's actually ways you could do more than that if you wanted to. You could do, I don't, I don't even know the exact limit, but you could do tons of oscillators. But of course, this takes lots of time, and it's a little bit annoying. So I'll show you an easier way. Let's just delete this, and now let's use the unison block. So at first, I wasn't even sure if the unison could do this, but it actually can. So... Let's turn everything down at first, so it's just one voice. We have our oscillator here. Turn off the filter. We can just hear uh, normal oscillator. Turn off the analog here. That's just what our oscillator sounds like by our, by itself. If you want different shapes, which I think the person mentioned, they said, oh, I want to do you know different shapes. You can, of course, change this to whatever you want, like a triangle or square or something. But you might want to use your own shapes. You can import them by going into here and use a custom sample. Or there's some already in here, like I imported my own, uh, like this. So we can use this instead. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, and now let's try changing this to two voices, like this. Now, that's okay, but there's a little bit of percussive. You actually, it doesn't sound any different if I change it from, like, one voice to, you know, nine voices. Like, okay, there's no difference. And that's because there's no detuning and there's no difference in the voices. If I do this, let's say, whatever this is, 5.9 voices, and I turn up the detune. They're all at zero phase, so you hear that, you know, like, 
percussiveness. If you want to get rid of that, you can turn this to random. You think, okay, that's pretty good. But let's get rid of this detune for now. Let's change it back to two voices. And I'll show you what the analog can do with this. So here's without the analog. Doesn't sound any different. It sounds the same as one voice. Turn the analog on. So you can see the voices detuning against themselves. You might be thinking now, okay, that's that's pretty good. And it's the same thing as just using multiple oscillators. From here, what we can do is we can change this if you want more drifting, just turn this up or down. We can increase the voices fairly easily. It turns on random phase for you automatically, everything's done. We can do even more stuff with this also. So here we'd use, let's say, bend. And we can turn on the analog for this. So now each voice will be randomly bent and be moving. So we can do all sorts of different things to kind of change this. And we can still use the detune also. So but let's say more detuned. And let's do more voices. So we can get all sorts of different sounds with this, and even this, I'm just using the oscillator. I could use a wavetable and set the wavetable for, you know, different things. So it's moving through the wavetable at different points. So this is a really easy way to get these unison sounds. You can set it, you know, wherever you want. Let's say uh, defaults to four. Let's try like six voices, not 46, six voices like this. And we can go in here, we can use the fast filter with this, and we have the same analog stuff going on with the difference in the attack time here. Let me turn the resonance down like this. Another thing we can do is we can actually go into the resonance and change that too. So we think, oh, I want some variations with the resonance. We can do that. So there's all sorts of things we can do to give this some variation and uh, easily and quickly get the types of sounds you want. And also you can take this in lots of creative directions if you want to do that. And I probably want to put a little bit of reverb on here uh, to make a sound like this. So one other thing I should probably mention before I leave is with the fast filter now, it's changed based upon the note. So if I'm playing the notes C and E, each note will have a slightly different attack speed uh, and a slightly different resonance. If you think I want it the, uh, based on the voice and not necessarily the note, all you need to do is just put the filter inside the unison here. The downside of this is it will actually use more CPU. And for me, when I've tried this, I don't really hear too much difference with that when it's inside there for filters. But maybe that's just me. Maybe you'll find, oh, there is a big difference. You don't know what you're talking about, Chandler. Maybe that's the case. So do that, you know, however you like. If you think that's better, you can put the fast filter inside there. Just be aware that it will use more CPU. And of course, the more voices you use inside the unison, the more CPU usage it will have. But I think it sounds better. So, of course... Change this however you like and play with the different uh, analog knobs in here with this analog drift. You can get lots of different things and I think everything that can be modulated per voice has an analog drift in here. When you turn it on, you'll see lots of things light up green and those light up by default. But there's other things in there that uh, won't, like semitones. You can actually adjust this if you want. And like I saw, you saw I did with the bend. You can al also adjust those if you want. So by using this, you can come up with all sorts of vintage flavors and new creative flavors. So I hope this answered uh, the question. If it did, that's great. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or something you want to know, leave me a comment down below. And check out all the other plugins at MeldaProduction.com. Till next time, see you.